All right, well, here we go. We have our first run of the week, a fabulous run done by an even more fabulous runner, Glitch Witch. Glitch Witch, how are you doing today? I'm so well. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing quite well. Thank you very much. I'm looking are... forward to this run. <laughs> so am I. Are you, uh, are you ready to ease into the marathon? Oh, I'm ready to ease into the marathon, all right. <laughs> Let's all right, take it um, without further ado, time will go in five, four, three, two, one. His long arms of decimation and it opens with, um, you know, a somewhat unskippable intro, but, you know, we're just going to see Adol run over to the side. So welcome to East 3. Um, I'll try not to talk over voice acting because you all need to see it, but basically the gist is this is uh somewhere after east four and dogi and adol which are kind of like mainish characters have come to dogi's hometown to see all of his old friends so we might just have a game about going to see all of your old friends here i don't know if you are used to seeing east games especially early ones uh early east is Bump Combat. This game was the first time that they released a game without Bump Combat. And it went so well, they went back into Bump Combat for four. <laughs> so I'm mostly just waiting for this text to go by. I don't have a lot to talk about during the beginning here, but you know, I will talk about how we jump in line with the music and we're in town because of course, and all the music in this game is very good. But in the meantime, Oh, oh go sorry, ahead. I'm I didn't mean to sorry. cut you off there. No, no worries. Go for it. Just cut me off. I don't stop talking otherwise. <laughs> so this, this is curious. I, I'm also a big E fan myself. I'm kind of curious. Which do you prefer, the bump combat or the non-bump combat? I think I'm contractually obligated to say the non-bump combat. Um, it, Fair enough. Bump combat's got its charm, but it wasn't wonderful in two and one. Four was okay, but yeah. Yeah, one and two felt pretty good. I haven't played four yet. Yeah, but there's various versions of 4. I've been working on the PC Engine version because it not only got a fan translation, but a fan dub. And the fan dub is very good. Now when you say good, do you mean this good, or do you mean good? If it's in line with the Turbo Graphics voice acting, like the 90s era. That's good. We gotta, we gotta keep retro well, alive. What do you Can't think? let it fade into history. Like so now I actually have control of the video game. So basically, Dogi ran into his old friend Elena. It's like, oh wow, I can't wait, I've seen you now. Um, and now it's like, well, I have to go do things, so go do whatever you want. And Dogi's gonna go hang out in the living room. We're gonna go buy an herb, and we're gonna buy a sword. And that, whoop, an herb, not a ring charge. And as well, we changed the message speed up too fast. So we're buying an herb. We are buying a sword. And I apologize for talking over the initial voice acting. Head to the Arb, there is a, this Zero herb head. in this game, thank you. In the original, uh, well, original, the SNES and uh, the possibly Genesis version, it was Arb. So, more voice acting for you. Okay, so now we've got our quest to go into the mine, which is the mayor and someone else went down into the mine, and uh, we're going to go save him, so let's go off to the mine. That seems like a, a good and reasonable thing. So, for many first-time East players, you may remember going into the mine and dying to the uh, first enemy or so, but uh, let's hopefully not do that. Someone must rescue him. Who are you? In the meantime, enjoy the hot jams as we hopefully don't die to the first enemy or two in the mine. Uh, immediately, if you're familiar with the original East games, uh, original East, I keep saying original, but you know, um, like uh, SNES, Genesis, you'll remember this thing being much, much harder. These enemies hit a lot harder in the Genesis and SNES version. Uh, you end up dying a lot quicker. You still die pretty fast in this, but I think it gives you like a somewhat of a fighting chance. So we're gonna grind some of these bird things here for a moment. Excuse me. I guess they just don't- oh, there they are. Bird things, these are definitely bugs. That should be enough. We just want to get one level before we enter this area. 
There we go. And we're gonna save because this is a marathon run and we want to not die. And dying is very common here, so we're gonna jump all the way down to the bottom. Okay, and we're going to pick up our power ring. This is like one of the most important rings in the game. This basically doubles Adol's damage. And doubling your damage in every single fight in the game is almost, is basically the move you want to do in every circumstance ever. Um, I guess I, I, do you need me to pause? I can totally do that. I'm just going to take a quick moment here. And I'll get an okay from people when we're good to go again. So we don't take any ease away from all y'all. So while we're sitting here, you mentioned some dangerous enemies. Wh which uh, enemies do you think are the worst for this run? Fabulous, we're good. Uh, the worst enemies in this game are going to be probably in the snow area. There's these little rock monsters that pop up out of the ground. Um, that tend to just completely demolish you. That's probably the scariest room in the game for me, aside from the other scariest rooms in the game. But right now, like, the beginning of this video game is probably the hardest it's going to get. Uh, actually, no, that's just a complete lie. There's a death. What's up? <laughs> I knew I'd die at least once in the mines today. Thank you. I should probably say, I keep saying that the beginning of this game is going to be the hardest part of it. The whole game is probably the hardest part of this video game, if I'm being completely honest. So, nope, go away, a little bug. And it wouldn't be an East run if something didn't treat me poorly. So we're going to try to conserve our health here, because we don't want to die on the first boss, which is, and I mean this in a serious way, the hardest boss in the video game. We don't have a lot of health at that point, we don't deal a lot of damage. It's uh, mostly just going to be some luck and some good positioning. We're going to get one more level before we get there, and um, we can only just hope everything goes well. But right now we're making our way down here to find the Lost Miner, and we have a cutscene. Look at that punch. What's going on here? Where's Brady? Move! Ow. I'll be okay. Who was that guy? Mayor Grady is still in there somewhere. I tried to find him, but the mine is too big. Take this key to the storehouse, where you will find a hidden sword. Hurry! Only you can help the mayor. <laughs> so, that's your introduction to Chester. Chester is Elena's brother, and he is the worst. Um, this guy down here has given us the storehouse key. The storehouse key is going to let us go all the way back to the beginning of this dungeon. Or this mine, I guess. I guess you can't call a mine a dungeon. That's just, by definition, incorrect. But we're going to go all the way to the back. And um, once we're back here, we're going to fight our first boss, which, excuse me if I die to it once, twice, thrice. It's going to maybe happen. This 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 person is very rude. Uh, this character, uh, some of you in chat are probably familiar with this the remake of this video game, Oath and Felgana. Uh, the boss we're about to fight, that character is way more fleshed out in the remake. Um, we have un... I, I don't know who this is, what they are doing, or anything about this character in this video game until the remake. Which I won't spoil their identity, because it is a pretty neat twist. But, you know, that twist does not occur in this video game. So we'll put our ring on and save the game and hope we don't die, eh? So we'll see how this goes. Wish me luck, everybody. Well, we died. <laughs> That's okay, we get another shot, and worst case, you know, we'll take a brief extra second run back at an herb and guarantee our win. But let's hope we don't need to do that. Now here we go, this is what I want from you. Everyone's weak point is the knees. Everybody's weak point is the knees in this video game, this is what you'll learn. And now we have a new sword. 
So Lauren, thank you. So thank you, Naladon in chat. <laughs> So what I do when I learn speedruns is I never ever remember anyone's name. So I'm just like, oh, this boss and this thing. So apologies for not remembering things. That boss, by the way, I've been also working on the um, the NES version a bit here and there. The, uh, the NES version's really weird and that boss is way harder. <laughs> But sometimes the alarm just gives you a really good pattern, and uh, you can just kind of stab them in the knees over and over. So now that we have the longsword, we have it a weapon that can get us down deeper into the mines, and we can go find uh, we can go find Marigrady, who apparently got really far in here. I might take some damage on the way because, well, whatever. The next boss, we hopefully won't be getting hit more than like once or twice, and at the very least, it shouldn't kill me. Which is like famous last words. All right, here we go. And one more room. Note that these mines have no way back up at all. You just kind of fall down through the sky with these worms that are falling from the sky. Once again, shield, uh, power ring, save, and go down. And let's see what happens. This guy, there's a good... Oh, I kind of wasted that cycle. You jump, and those things miss you every time. Go in for some stabbing. Get out for the lightning. Whoop. I'm just going to be quiet for a moment. Because <laughs> this has gone very left. Ah! <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> I promise I'm good at this video game. Sometimes it doesn't like me. My apologies to the showrunners on my deaths on the easy bosses. Let's go. Okay, there we go. Yeah, that was that was being hitboxed. That's okay. We're gonna get more cutscene now, so you get rewarded. And me, I guess. I'm gonna eat some candy corn while the cutscene's playing. All right, that's cutscenes. Also, shout out to to Chester's voice actor. Like, it's my favorite voice actor in this video game. It just it doesn't make any sense. It it is very early '90s voice acting, and um, it, it's very perfect. All right, now we're back in town. In town, we have some things to do. Uh, in town, we're going to buy a chainmail. Which I'm glad I remember, because I have forgotten to open my notes. Uh, as well, in town, we are going to buy a ring recharge, because ring depletes every moment that you have rings on. It's basically an MP meter. And we're going to buy a new healing herb. Take our ring off so we don't lose anything. And I have completely forgotten to put on my uh, armor. 
And so now we got Roy's pendant in there, which Roy is a missing miner, and his grandmother's very worried. So we're gonna go stop in, um, this is the wrong house. It's over here. Stop in on Roy's grandmother. Let him know, hey, we found this pendant. And we get the shield ring. Shield ring is going to be very helpful um, in the next area that we're going to. And we're going to go talk to Dogi, who's going to introduce us to Elena, and we'll get some cutscene and dialogue. Adel, you came just in time. There's something I'd like you to do. But first, Elena, could you tell us your story again? I'm afraid to tell this to someone I've just met. But if you trust him... This is about my brother, Chester. It has been half a year since he left Serena. It looks like he's working for King Maguire. I've heard bad rumors about Chester. They say he's been around Alcano Ruins. I found my brother's pendant near the entrance, so I know he's been there. This might not have anything to do with Elena's story, but a priest named Pierre went to Alcano Ruins yesterday and hasn't returned. Adel, I'd like you to go to the ruins and look for Pierre. I'm concerned about the safety of the village. If you see Chester, tell him that his sister Elena is very worried. Oh, I've forgotten to introduce myself. I'm Elena Studart. It's nice to meet you, Adolf. But I'm... All right, that's our cutscene. And yeah, we are... We, a lot of the voice acting does have this, I've never read the script before and I don't have any inflection going on. It's perfect. I love it so much. So now we're going to Alcano Rooms to go check out what's going on. Um, we heard Brother Pierre went up there, and we heard uh, about Chester maybe being there. So let's go! Alcano Rooms. Also a very dangerous place, but you know, we've got strats now. So we'll save our video game. Because, of course, live show. <laughs> and that's why we saved it. Uh, first room, you need to jump over these guys and stab them. And while we're on the way to the next boss, how about I read out a few more donations? Shall Go I? Go for it. Thank Absolutely. Alright, so we have a few donations here. Quite quite a few to get through. We'll read out a few of them and get back to them in, in the near future. The first one is from Nonstop, granting us a Bowie bandana. Thank you very much, Nonstop. Very much appreciated. The next donation we have is by Little Sharky, giving support to everyone in this event. Wishing all the luck to all 54 runs throughout this entire week. Thank you very much, Little Sharky. Next one is Pork Bob, giving a lot of love to all the runners and to those behind the scenes. Thanks for the love, Pork Bob. We appreciate the love, we appreciate the support. And thank you for everyone for being here. Thank you for the support, and thank you very much for all the donations. Nami thanks you, and so do we. Fabulous. We're about to enter another spooky, dangerous room. Um, as soon as we fall down this cliff here. Okay, well, okay. Down the cliff and across another cliff. My bad. Okay, so this is why we bought the shield, or bought, brought the shield ring. So we're gonna put the shield ring on, make sure my chainmail's on, because which is... Too many times have I done a run and just forgot to put the chainmail on. Uh, there is no farming in here now. So this room, don't jump. Those little dudes going across the bottom of the screen will absolutely wreck you if you jump. So just take the fireball to the chest and make sure to stab the person. And now we have cutscene again. Brother Pierre, you must tell me what you want here. I seem to have lost my way. No need to lie, good brother. You're looking for the statue, aren't you? What the? I think I heard someone up there. You! You were the swordsman I saw in the Tigray mine. Didn't I warn you not to show your face around here? And now for one of my favorite lines in the game. You! Come with us! Molten lava is flowing down there. No man 
man has ever returned alive. How do you know my name? So you have talked with Elena. Well, it's my life. What I do has nothing to do with you or Elena. Chester once again showing us that he is a jerk. And showing us his fabled punching technique. Okay, so now we're in this volcano of some sort, which is a lot less terrifying. Excuse me, a lot less terrifying than you think. Um, I don't want to say that and then magically die here. <laughs> well then, the way my commentary is slightly ahead of the video, that's going to be real amusing. So let's do it right this time. Like, this is the safe room. Like, this is fine, this room. Okay, here we go. We're fine. We're through. There's a free herb in here. There's a, a, a unlimited free herbs in here. <laughs> there we go. And yeah, people in chat are noting that there was no Chester fight. Uh, there is no Chester fight in this, which is kind of good and bad. I wish we fought Chester at some point, but apparently um, in a cutscene later we'll find out sort of why. So Glitch, which I have a question for you. Go Since for I, it. I know you've played the remake of this. Uh -huh. what, is, what is your favorite fight for the original, and what is your favorite fight for the remake? Uh, my favorite fight in the original might be Dalarn in the beginning, uh, just because it's such a mess of a fight. Um, this upcoming fight, though, also very well might be one of my favorites, just because it's very silly. Uh, oh, in yeah, the I remember that. In the remake, probably the final boss, uh, Galavan, or he's got a different name in the remake, I think. But the final boss is just such a fun fight, and the dialogue that they gave him while he fights you is just ridiculous. And I'm a big fan of it. Alright, so here's our next boss. Get ready for all of the tech in this fight. And that was all the tech in that fight. <laughs> I know, I know, a lot went into it. You just kind of plant your feet in one spot and wait. All I right. think you're going to need to explain that one to me. So, if you put yourself in a spot where the dragon can't push you away, it just kind of stays in your hitbox, and you'll deal more damage to it than it will deal to you. So, just don't move and swing the sword and you'll be okay. But okay. if it can push you to the left, it can go a little spicy. Oh my gosh, don't die in this room, cat. Ah! Okay. This is scary. This is a very scary room. Okay, uh, let's save the video game again, because I have very low health. I'm going to do my best not to die here, but I don't have an herb right now. And the volcano is scary. Possibly the second scariest part of the game? Everything's good, y'all. Everything's good. Table point east, uh, cheesing east bosses, and I think we will cheese every boss. Don't worry. <laughs> sort of. There's a harpy that I don't have a good strat for, and you'll just watch me flail around and do my best to hit it. We're gonna take advantage of our all-you-can-eat herb buffet. Take a quick save, because, you know, marathon run. I uh, I eventually want to do a run of this game without dying, which is kind of a big call for me. But I feel like if I'm going to get a good time, I just need to not rely on saving every 10 seconds. But also, just the way I play RPGs is very centric around, like, I need to save this video game as often as I can. Uh, Crab, how, how often do you save video games when you're playing RPGs and you can kind of save wherever you want? Uh, 
after every two steps, pretty much. Yep. <laughs> I'm glad you fall in line with how I feel about video games. No, no, you, you, you missed that one potion you thought you weren't going to use, and you won it back at no. I, oh, I, yeah. I, Using herbs before the final boss of the video game is not okay in most RPGs. You just, what if you need them before the, during the final fight? I'm just going to play it extra safe in here. I mean, we've got the herb now, and the dragon's not really a threat. Spoilers, there's a dragon coming up, I'm sorry. <laughs> so we basically just need to let ourselves out of the volcano, and then we have some very good cutscenes for y'all. Gonna burn the herb. So I concentrate getting out of here. You could probably fit like one donation in here. All right, we'll do. The next donation on our list is by Kfizzle4. Their first East game was East Six on the PS2. It's one of their favorites, and you chose a really good game to have your first East game. <laughs> Thank you very much, Kfizzle, for the donation. Very much appreciated. Fantastic. Thank you so much for that. Uh, we are out of here, and then we're going to have four cutscenes for you now. I'm glad to see you're safe. Someone's coming. Quick, hide. <laughs> I could have sworn I heard someone. Chester, what's going on? It's nothing. But I thought I heard someone. It must have been my imagination. Well, be more careful. Tell me, Chester, what will you do about Brother Pierre? He seems to be on to us. So I'm going to lock him up in the dungeon of Valestine Castle. Mr. Merlin! Yes? The fire dragon Girin has been slain! What? I'll be there immediately! Chester, I don't see how that little boy can give you such a hard time! I'm very sorry. It seems like they've gone. I don't know, but it gives me the creeps. Hey, what's that in the dark? It could be some kind of mechanism. I think this is the way to find the statue. I remember a story my brother used to tell me. He would talk of a flying monster that lived in volcano ruins. A monster that guarded a magical statue. Why? I am the one who brought you here. I can't let you face this danger alone. Thank you. All right, but... I do want to say I'm a big fan of the line about yelling at Chester about you cannot capture this little boy. Adol is not a young child, but okay, that's a, a line, I guess. So now we're going to go fight ourselves a dragon. Also that Elaine is like, I'm going to help you fight the dragon, and Adol's just like, well, I have a sword. And she accepts that as a good enough reason not to come to fight the dragon. Alright, so we're going to sit right here, and the dragon's going to swoop down and be in the right spot to just stab him like that. So if you're not right here, he kind of gets a little too high, too low, you can't get his hitbox. So being right in this little nub of the ledge is kind of exactly where you need to be. And this dragon should go down very quickly. Also, shout out to the upstab, it's very good. Also, get ready for the next cutscene. I want you to pay attention to what Chester does. Because he will change his mind very quickly. Wait. 
Oh, we have to still walk down all the way down the hallway. I was quiet too early. Sorry. I'm surprised you've come back alive. I guess I underestimated you. It looks like I'll have to deal with you personally. Chester, no! Elena, what are you doing here? I asked Dadle to stop you from doing any more harm. Please, stop! Why are those statues so important to you? It's my duty. I must get revenge! Surely you remember what happened that day. Adolf, just leave me alone. I don't want to fight. Let's go back to the village. Adolf. So, it's I don't want uh, I'll have to deal with you personally. And then immediately goes to, I don't want to fight. So, what does Chester want? Maybe nothing? Adol, am I glad to see you. I'm leaving for a while. I must climb Mount Seco. I seek my old spiritual master who lives there. I could be gone a long time. Adol, Mayor Grady gave me a message for you. He must see you. It's urgent. His house is beside the inn. Okay. Dogie's going to go off and live in the mountains. We're going to go buy ourselves... Uh, what am I buying? Plate mail. Nope. Uh, not plate mail. I'm buying nothing. A uh, shield. Sorry. Oh, I don't have nearly enough money for a shield. Well, we're going to do it without a shield. Why do I not have enough money? Alright. Well, that's my own failing. Let's... Oh, wait. No, I'm in the wrong spot. We buy nothing in here. My apologies for uh, stumbling through my notes like that. Shield is later. We just need to buy a uh, charge our ring. Buy an herb. Not two herbs, because we can't. You you're legally not allowed to carry two herbs and buy an amulet. What does the amulet do? The amulet basically hits everything on the screen three times. So we're just going to run off to the left, and the mayor wants to talk to us. Adol, my boy. I'm glad you have come. Look what has happened, young'un. Someone broke in while I was gone. They sure made a mess of my home, but nothing is missing. I think they were thugs from Ballastine Castle. They are after the statue you found in Tigray Mine, my boy. And for some reason, they thought I had it. If the statue has something to do with all the creatures that have been roaming around lately, then you will be in danger. But we still need your help. You are a great swordsman, and I will put the trust of the entire town in you. What do you say, young'un? Are you game? That's the spirit, Adel, my boy. Here's the first thing I would like you to do. You remember the locked door you found in the mine? Well, it stays locked, because beyond it are pits with many fierce monsters. I've heard old stories about that place, and they say another statue rests somewhere inside. I've already sent a party of miners there, my boy. And I would like you to join them in a search for the magic statue. Here, take this with you, young'un. I hope you will find it useful. So people in chat are definitely noticing that, uh... Adol gets called my boy a lot for some reason, and that's across multiple games. I, I don't know where that tradition came from. As well, it's uh, sadly absent from East 3. But East 1 and 2 is riddled with calling all the monsters goons. Um, but people are asking why East on the Turbo Graphics. Why East on the Turbo Graphics? 
Uh, mostly because I absolutely adore the Turbo Graphics as a console. Um, it is probably my favorite console of all time at this point, and I have a Dreamcast tattoo, so that means a lot coming from me. Uh, it, it's a, a system I never had growing up, uh, and it's something that I, it's just a big blank spot for me for a long time. So I departed on uh, what I'll, I'll call the Turbo Graphics 300, which is where I'm playing every single Turbo Graphics video game in the library. So I've been playing everything. I'm like a hundred and. 200 games in or something like that? I don't know, I haven't done it in a week or two, but... I haven't played this yet for the project, but I had to try it because I played the SNES game a little bit. So, we're in the secret door that we saw before. Um, wow, I had more to add on for my Turbo Graphics. Oh, also, I really like its controller! Built-in Turbo on the controller. Like, all Turbo Graphics controllers have tur uh, Turbo toggles, so Turbo becomes valid for speedruns. It makes mashing way easier, and a lot of shmups more fun to play. But also, since the Turbo Graphics controller is shaped like an NES controller, it means it's, uh, like the proportions of the controller are the same, unlike a Genesis controller, which kind of has that weird boomerang shape to it a little bit. And, uh, why that's important to me is I, I don't hold controllers like most people. <laughs> Uh, I hold the controller upside down, and having something that can you can flip upside down and hold right side up is very important to me, and still have like the same kind of proportions on both sides. So I've been playing this entire game today that you're watching with the controller upside down, just because that's how I learned how to play video games. But then like the SNES controller is like the furthest I can go with an upside down controller really, because it's weird and it's hitting L and R on it is odd. But it works. Controller gal, but yeah. But yeah, um, uh, controller cam, maybe one day, y'all. But it's my favorite little thing from people to, uh, to come across. Also, shout out to those people down there, uh, by the treasure chest. You can go down there and get lore. But we don't want lore. There's also an item, it's like a statue of some sort, or something. And they tell you all about the person who fought Demonicus back in the past and sealed him away. We're just not gonna do any of that. Just know, like, you know, maybe someone fought Demonicus a long time ago. We're just gonna make sure this plate mail is uh, equipped. I do want to note that, like, you see me not getting hurt by these things. I do want to poke at, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you what happens if you get hit by one of these. And, oh, okay, no I'm not. So, no, you'll never see. Well, we have to come back through here. They deal a tremendous amount of damage for no reason. Oh, here's one. Here's, let me save this video game because we're gonna die here, but... Look how much damage they do. Excuse me most of my life bar right away. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's load that. We don't actually want to die. Oh, this is the boss room. I just need to equip and put this on. And the amulet. There's going to be three quick flashes on the screen if you're sensitive to that. So just give me a... Just, I'll tell you when they're done. And they're over. Oh, we're just going to get into position here. And just jump and stab this thing for a while. So the red orb will teleport you to the blue orb. The blue orb will not teleport you back to the red one. And so we're going to sit right here, take five jump stabs, and then um, wait for five rocks to go by. We can some way get away with six if we've got the health, but... It's basically this. It is the longest fight in the video game. <laughs> we're, we're fine, we're fine. Alright, so that boss is dead, we're gonna get another statue. We've been uh, gathering the statues because that's, uh, that's supposed to be the way to defeat the evil. 
And uh, I probably spoiled that we won the fight there because that was too soon. But if you do want to read some donations here, this is kind of the perfect time because we're just going to walk backwards through the, uh, through the cave. Or I, I can always drone on about the cave as well. That's fine too. So, we're just gonna go backwards through the cave. This jump, by the way, you saw me make that jump going to the left. That is the required normal way to do that. It is a very, very long jump. It is very weird and dangerous. All right. So we're just gonna work our way back out. We're going back to town and then they're gonna send us up to the mountains. We wanna make that jump so we don't accidentally have to deal with that chest down there. And, you know, the cutscene that comes along with it, which is way longer than it needs to be. We are a little bit stronger now, so we can jump on these things and get a downstab going. Occasionally, um, you can downstab it before, but occasionally it'll still hit you, even if you use the downstab. So... We just kind of play it safe and hit it in the tentacles that kind of fly off from the side. But now that we're a little bit stronger, down step's fine. Also, shout out to down step just being down in this game. Whereas in, I think, the Genesis and the SNES game, you have to jump and then swing to get the down step going. And then hold the swing button. We made it back out. We get teleported back to town. We go back to Mayor Grady, and Mayor Grady's going to tell us what to do next. So there will be more cutscene. Uh, in the meantime, now's the time that I buy that large shield. Did I even use my herb? I did not. This is great. Even the NES game has upstab, but it's not very good in the NES game. Here's our large shield. This will save us. And now we also brought this lady the crystal, so she'll give us something called the Brogia Serum. Or we can buy something called the Brogia Serum. Uh, and what that does is the Brogia Serum lets you recharge your ring on the fly. So you can be out in the field and still recharge your ring. Uh, it's, you've got three uses and they give you approximately 40 to 80 uh, points in ring while you're out. with us. Everything will be ours once we make him return. Because I am a kind man, I will include you. I promise you that if you give us the statue, half of the world will be your kingdom. Doesn't that tempt you? You must be kidding. Listen to yourself, man. And you call yourself a king? Too bad, Grady. I was sure you could be a powerful leader. But now you dare to oppose me. We will have the statue. If you refuse to cooperate, your villagers will be held responsible. Clear out of my way! Well now. That was King Maguire of Valestine Castle, my boy. The king himself has finally come to threaten me. I'd better tell you everything, Adel. This is becoming very serious. Listen carefully. An evil being called Demanicus once dominated this land. He was locked away by a brave warrior. Now, King Maguire is trying to unleash Demanicus and use his evil power to conquer neighboring lands. You possess three of the four statues once used to put Demanicus away. King Maguire worried that you will find the fourth statue and banish Demanicus once again. To the north on Mont Seco lives an old hermit. He knows many legends and maybe more about the statues. I'm sorry to get you involved in this, my boy, but with this injured leg, 
Well, you see how it is. Take this letter to the hermit. He may help you. Good luck, young Adel. And so the game now demonstrates that the king is very strong and can punch Adel into the into the sky for a brief moment. Um, and Grady calls Adel, Adel my boy like 27 times. And continues to mispronounce his name. Because his name is Adol, not Adel. Very, very important difference, but they, they keep calling him Adel here. So, welcome to the mountains. I think this is um, some of my favorite music. Not this specific screen here, but the very next one. So we're going to put on our power ring, because this room is scary. While you climb that mountain, do I have some time to read off a few donations? Absolutely. All right, sounds great. Well, directed at you, Glitch Witch, you have two admirers, Zahari and Paladon. I've given, I've wished you a bunch of luck on your run today. We also have a very large donation from Baxherd189, a two to the ten, an exponential donation. Thank you very much, showing you some love, and we very much appreciate it, Baxherd. We also have a, cu a couple no comment donations from Bullrick and Nightflyer. Thank you very much. And now you can have the floor again, Butch Witch. I forgot to buy something, so let's just load our save and go back. So, my bad. Uh, I forgot to buy the mirror. I can't afford the mirror right now. Okay, let's just make it happen. This is gonna be weird and scary, so bear with me for a hot moment. Okay, so this is going to go into slightly uncharted territory for me at the moment. Uh, we're going to do something very dangerous, which is go through this cave without the mirror. So what the mirror does is it freezes all the enemies for a good three to five seconds. And it makes it possible to get through here without taking damage. Um, we don't have that, so we're going to be very careful. Nope, nope, I need to heal during that. Okay. Uh, I'm probably going to be quiet during this, so if you have anything you'd like to talk about, Crab, the floor is yours. Sounds good. Good luck getting through this death trap. I uh, I remember very well. <laughs> but while you work your way through this, we have a few more donations that just came through. One from Chikobo. Chikobo says that they love a good RPG marathon, leading off with one with East 3. Very good taste. Thank you very much, Chocobo. Another donation by from Tom88. Looking forward to a great week of speedruns, and it is going to be a great week. Tom. Another donation from Fabricoser. Hoping everyone is staying safe and that we have a great week and a great time for all the runs. And we also have another one from Shawnee718-8102. Donating $5 and two $5 donations for two others who can't to donate themselves. Thank you very much, Shawnee. We appreciate your selflessness. We appreciate your donation as well. Thank you so much, y'all. And I know a few of those were donated towards me. I appreciate that a great deal. We made it, though. And we only used all of my herbs. Come in, my children. We must ponder the future. I see. Those from Valestine Castle are seeking the ancient statues. I know one of the statues is hidden here in the caverns of Mount Seco. Legend says it is protected by a powerful force. It is said that the beast which dwells atop these mountains holds powerful magic, a talisman to help enter the cavern. Edo, my child, you are unprepared. Carry this sword with you into battle. Okay. Uh, Dogi is kind of sitting on the, the window, uh, the door sill here. So now we just need to grind to about um, almost 20,000 experience. Which, unfortunately, I don't have a lot to say about. We're going to put our cool sword on. We're going to hopefully just do really well and not take damage as we go to fight the dragon that's coming. But we do get free heals at this uh, at that cabin, 
So we're gonna grind on these things until we're uh, a little bit stronger. I do want to shout out that guy's voice acting, though. Definitely coming through some sort of uh, voice converter of sorts. And it looks really silly. Or looks. Wow, uh, sounds really neat. You can't see voices, unless you can, but, you know, I, I, I've never done that. I guess in a way, wouldn't subtitles be seeing voices, I guess? Hmm. Makes you think. Alright, so, I mean, if you do want to take anything away, if you have anything else, grab, that's all you. I'm just going to be dabbing at rocks. And I'm welcome to just keep talking if you need me to. Well, we have a couple donations here to uh, kick this off, kick off your little grind. Uh, first, we have an anonymous donation, getting the puns early. I'm looking forward to a lot of the puns this week. We also have another donation by Stolteheim. It says, Knock and dead, everyone. Falcom represent." Very good taste in games, my good fellow. <laughs> Alright. We're almost there. We just needed a little bit over... Well, we're just gonna go to 20. The way everything's been going today, we're going to 20,000. here and one more thing while the uh, the grind continues I'd like to uh, point out a uh, bid currently going on for called braver swag Sephiroth it, it is a bid for us to do a braver Sephir Sephiroth kill instead of the normal kill so like the limit break braver yes Ooh. Yes, that, that's the current build, build that we have going on right now for that. You should take a look at it. We're currently on our way to a $400 goal. It'll be a lot of fun, and it'll be a lot of swag. We are almost there, and then the run can continue. Yeah, in the in the, the SNES version, everyone's used to killing birds uh, in the volcano area. Apparently the SNES version has a bug where the experience level doesn't get halved for the enemies and it just keeps giving you full experience for everything you kill. Uh, traditionally in East games, every time you level the experience you get from everything seems to half. So that is in full effect here. In the Genesis version you just get full experience from the top of the game. So that's uh that's one thing to, that's one way to do it. Okay, let's not get hurt again. So we're going to go fight our Harpy. It should not be that terrifying of a fight. More terrifying is maybe these rocks, but it's okay. No. One more screen of rocks. Well, this screen of rocks. And then we get to fight the Harpy. Which I don't actually have a good strat for, other than try to hit it as much as I can. <laughs> I think it's this room. Yep. There we go. See the RPs? I don't- you don't really need a good strat. Just make sure it comes down and... Just swing the sword in it, and the life bar will just drain real fast. I will say, in all East games, I am a big fan of the bosses. Even the weird gargoyle bat boss in one that everyone complains about. It's just a fun way to fight things. Especially in bump combat. Oof. And that remake of East 1, those bosses are way harder than in uh, TurboGrafx East 1. I guess I should, like, just talk a little bit about, um, East and why I'm playing East. And, like, I have never played an East game before this year. And then, uh, in my project where I'm playing through all the TurboGrafx video games on my stream, uh, East 1 came up. And it was great. Like, absolutely fantastic. And then East 2 came up, and it was almost as good. 
I did not appreciate the map design in East 2, it was very mazy. And then went on to play this again, and then Oath and Felgana, and as well East Origin, which East Origin is incredible. And I just kind of kept at it. Like, I just really, really, really enjoy these video games. And they're like, especially early on, I know they get a little bit longer later. Early East titles don't overstay their welcome. They tell their story and get out, there's usually one town. Like, I don't like exploring towns in big open world maps and games, kind of. So East was kind of perfect, it's like, no, 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 you don't need to explore too much. Here's a town, all of the, all of the commerce is going to happen in it. Alright, power ring, save. Let's go. Let's not die to the dragon. Oh, we stepped into the dragon. That's a good way to get killed by it. I don't have much to do other than hope I kill the dragon. So stepping inside the dragon definitely put me at a disadvantage there. Let's do it again. We got it this time. There's the right pattern. Okay, here we go. And now we have more cutscene. Also a famous, uh, a famous Dogi thing. Uh, thoughts on East 7, uh, 9. I've not played it. Well, obviously not, I've not played it. But, uh, I'm nowhere near that number. Statues. We are victims of the curse of Demanicus. Now we are trapped down here together. All right, I'll tell you. A year ago, everyone in my village died. Murdered by that king. Right before my eyes, my friends, neighbors, and parents were butchered. One after another. My sister Elena and I were the only survivors. I started working at Bellastine Castle. I was planning to avenge my people when I discovered the plans to re-invoke the curse of Demanicus. King McGuire underestimates the power of the curse. It can destroy Valestine Castle itself. And when it does, I will have my revenge. They will be destroyed by their own ambitions. Hey, did you hear something? to rescue you! Chester, is that really you? It's me, Dogi. Dogi? Chester, you've changed. Ten years ago, you were a man with many dreams. You used to tell me how you were going to make the land of Kenai the greatest in the world. And now look at you. I want you to stop working for King Maguire and Valestine Castle, Chester. Then maybe, Things will be like they used to be between us. Dogi, forgive me. Master, thank you for everything. Be at peace, Dogi. Remember me and return when you are in these lands. Well, Adel, we must leave these cursed mountains. Togi once again living up to his name and breaking through walls. As well, um, this 
This scene is a lot gentler than the remix scene. Jedi, what happened? The town was attacked. All the villagers have been taken hostage. They're being held in Valestine Castle. What? Adel, only you can help them. Go, rescue the villagers. But take this ring with you. It is a parting gift from our master. Yeah, for those people that uh, know the remake well, it's it's a, a bit more... Um, Chester's a lot more of a jerk in that scene. So we're going to go get our items, get a serum, grab an amulet, and that's it. Oh wait, no, 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 no. Cat, please, recharge your ring. <laughs> Let's go see the mayor, who's gonna give us our next objective. And then we're gonna go off to Valestine Castle. This time I'm afraid King Maguire is serious. He says that if we don't give him the statues, he will kill all of the villagers. Adel, my boy. You fought very hard for this village, but as mayor, I have to make sure the people are safe. I have to ask you to give the statues to King Maguire, so that the villagers will be spared. You can fight him later. You are a brave man, young'un. I trust your decision. Please try your hardest. Okay, so we're gonna go up to Valstein Castle and um, deal with, you know, all of the bad things going on in there, I guess. Valstein Castle, what can I say about Valstein Castle? It's mean, it's bad, it's dangerous, and I'm gonna die a bunch of times, I hope. Oh, not I hope. That's not what I'm hoping for. I'm hoping we don't die a bunch of times, but we'll see what the game has in store for us. Elena has beat us here, though. She once again is going to try to charge into adventure, which is fine. Then we just tell her, no, wait outside. This is okay. It has extremely good music. So these things here deal a ton of damage, so we're just going to not deal with them. Just get around them. Uh, these things deal significantly less damage. Especially when they don't hit you. Alright, this is Valestun Castle. What you're going to see here is a lot of traps. Uh, these uh, these kind of tealish knights. And then these white knights. The white knights we do not mess with. They block about half your shots. And they block. And if they hit you after they block, you will pretty much just die. So, we're not going to deal with them at all. Uh, the remake of this video game, I think... Came out, I think, on like Windows XP or some nonsense, but it got ported to Steam and whatnot later. <laughs> there is a PS2 version of this video game. It's still a side scroller. It's very different from this, but it is still the side scrolling East. But it doesn't play like Oath. It is very much the wander a remake of Wanderers, and not Oath and Falgana. Which means different perspectives, still side-scrolling and everything. Come on, come here. Thank you. I am concentrating a little bit in Valenstein Castle, because this place is very mean, and um, I don't know if- well, you haven't seen it yet, but those things deal a ton of damage. All the traps deal like about half your health bar. So it's just not.
And I will be saving, basically, screen to screen. That's okay. That's less okay. That's also less okay. Okay, so when you load the game, everything's kind of got iframes for a brief moment. Including Adol. So you can theoretically just kind of save through everything. It's not an effective way to get through stuff. But when you load, you just gotta remember, like, the enemies have iframes, you have iframes, nothing can be hurt. You'd think being able to take advantage of it would be a little bit better. So now I've got the best shield in the game. Okay. Just not get hit by this gentleman. Save the game. I don't remember if this is the last room. We're just gonna live with that one. Uh, okay, power ring on, shield on, save. Is it the Metroid fanfare people are at? M many people have brought up the Metroid fanfare. It's very similar. <laughs> Okay, so let me explain what I'm trying to do in this fight. Basically, Knight takes two swings of the uh, of the, the little mace thing. After the second pass, you take a few crawls forward, and he will duck and swing it behind you. So you have a sweet spot where you don't get hit. Unfortunately, getting hit hurts a lot. but just stab things in the feet. But usually, uh, if you're playing well, you can do that fight without taking a hit. It's just, it's still difficult. And yeah, this is a very uh, irritating boss in Oath and Falgana. So now we have the armband, which gets us access to the party, I mean, um, the rest of the castle. So we're just gonna work our way backwards a little bit, and uh, if you have a donation, that'd be, that'd be a, a relatively good time for it. Sounds good. We have uh, two currently. We have a donation from KBTC. No message, but thank you very much, KBTC. And one from Mr. P.R. Miller, who says, Aerith will live forever if we re rename her Tifa, technically. <laughs> and it's true. It is very true. It's very good logic. Alright, so we're working our way on to the next boss here. It is a very um, weird boss fight, and it's not easy. And uh, I'm probably going to be a little bit quiet while it's happening. But we're not there yet. But it is the Fire Doggo, if you remember other versions of this video game. Fire Doggo is a very good dog. But in the meantime, we're gonna go get the best armor in the game. Weird that they put all the best armor in the final, oh, not the final dungeon, but near the final dungeon of the game. just not take any unnecessary hits because the dog is pretty safe except extremely execution heavy and sometimes it just decides it wants to hit you okay dog time I think I hope dog time there's gonna be three brief flashes on the screen flashes are done uh, well, count to two and flashes will be done. And I need to remember my pattern. <laughs> and this is how Doggo's gonna go. You basically want the dog to be at a certain point on the right side of the screen, so when he jumps at you, he leaps over you and not into you. 
jump over the fire and upstab him as he goes by. And then as well, when he's going back to the right, you want to downstab while you're moving upwards to kind of be in his hitbox for a bit and get some free hits that way. It is a long fight and it is a demanding fight. He doesn't hit too hard if he hits you, but... You're more likely going to be uh, not at full health if you're coming through Valenstein Castle, as that level, that area is just mean, and I've had a maybe one of the best Valenstein Castles of my life so far, so... Yeah. Long fights do mean more time to jam. Right, let's keep it moving now. More cutscene. Adol, look out! I was so worried about you. I know you told me to wait, but I had to come for you. This man was going to attack you. So you are Adol. I've heard of the troubles you gave Chester. I see. But who needs King Maguire? Step back! what that was either, but he just kind of opens the way to the rest of the castle. So now we're back in a room with these things. We deal a lot more damage because we have leveled and we have better armor, so we don't have to worry about them as so much. And we're just gonna not try not to get hit by these, but they really don't deal any damage, and I can be very, um, very loose with fighting those. So we're going to go fight our next boss, it's going to be a statue. So we're going to put on our power ring again, as we do, and save the game. And fight a statue. Guess what we're going to do to it? If you guess stabbed it in its feet, you might be the winner. <laughs> Alright, so now we're going to equip our serum real quick. Get some free ring power out of it. And we're gonna go let everyone out of prison. There are three people in this jail cell, we do not care about two of them. We want the knight to give us the blue armband. On uh, the far left is the, um, the miner that everyone thinks is dead, and I think the other one's Pierre. But really, we don't need to worry about any of them. Just the blue armband, and the blue armband lets us open a door up here. And now we're in a very cool area coming up. I think everyone likes the clock tower. Suddenly Castlevania asks. This place, don't fight things. Do not fight these knights. They are mean, they are strong, do not deal with the knights. Jump over the knights. And we're going to go get two more items basically throughout the rest of the game. 
Radiathus Protect Ring, which makes you completely invincible while you're wearing it, and also drains your mana, like, uh, it drains your ring power, I should say. Extremely fast. And then as well, up here in this corner, they have hidden the best sword in the game. And now we've got the best sword in the video game, which we're going to equip and save. And hopefully get this jump on the first try- ow! On the first try! And of course we didn't. That's okay. We're gonna load the game real quick. Load it again. So I'm gonna go with, uh, this probably would have been maybe world record <laughs> I got this the first try! <laughs> but, say la vie! Why is this difficult now? This jump is impossible. Do we have a moment for a message from our sponsors? Please do. Please will. All right, so we have a message here from NAMI, the National Alliance on Mental Illness. So NAMI has put in a lot of work into both education and support for people with mental illness. This includes a national helpline that can provide information, resources, and a compassionate understanding trained volunteer to support anyone who calls in. These programs have been very successful and have helped more than 300,000 people a year and have effectively been very life-changing for many people who have reached out. Fabulous. So we made the jump eventually. And we're just gonna roll on through our castle, eh? We are coming up on another boss here. It is not our final boss, but that is not too far away. I know a timer probably is trying to convince you that the final boss is not far away, but there's a lot of cutscenes in the way. So I'm going to eat our herb here just in case. Save the game, and we're gonna fight this boss that confounded me for a long time. Um, my first time playing this. Fortunately, it is not Chester. We never fight Chester. Germanicus lives again! This human form is no longer necessary. We're going to fight this thing. What is this thing? I don't know. But it's got a critical failure in its design. The back of it doesn't have a hitbox. Until it starts teleporting. Actually, the whole bottom doesn't have a hitbox. Until it teleports. Alright, so there's going to be a bunch of lore for a while, so please enjoy all the lovely, uh, dialogue. I have been foolish. Why did I believe the words of Maryland? That devil! His only purpose was to return his master Demanicus to this world. Soon after Demanicus was revived, hideous monsters overran my beautiful castle. I am lost. My kingdom is falling into chaos and ruin. You must save me. The only hope left is in the power of the four statues. You must act quickly. Take them to the realm of Demanicus and seal him away with their power. Here, take this idol. Its power will aid you and help you to enter into the land of Demanicus. I am responsible for many evil acts. Now it's time to make up for my past and try to correct my errors. Can my people forgive me? Ada! 
all, I'm glad you are safe. Whosoever tries to interfere with my return will suffer dearly. Adol, how do you like this? <coughs> Don't worry. She is not dead. Yet. If you want her to live, bring the four statues to my domain. Now Adol's going to question everything he does and his entire worth as an adventurer. Which I guess, okay, someone's got to question it. But we're going to go back to town and talk to the mayor who's going to give us, uh, who's going to tell us we're good. We can just go home. All right, maybe Mayor Grady can help us. But in the meantime, let's 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 handle some business here. Let's charge our ring. Buy an herb. Let's not buy a second herb. That's illegal. Let's buy a Progest serum. Buy an amulet. And let's get going. And let's go talk to the mayor. And he's gonna tell us we're good to go, and we have fulfilled our duty, and we can go home. Give me those statues now. Your part is finished. What? Surely someone must go? But whoever goes may not return alive. You are still young. There are many things you haven't learned, my boy. Grady, let Adel go. He is not just a drifter. Adel is an adventurer. I'm sure he knows his life may be in danger, but there are some things that a man just can't back away from. You should have faith in Adel. Adel. Then take this with you. It will be helpful in okay. your fight. Okay. We are good to go. We have the Fire Jewel. We can navigate Demonicus's maze, which I should probably start doing without the jewel, but I want it. And let's get going. We have all the tools we need to beat the game. I'm sorry we're not maxing out our XP meter, but uh, I don't know what to tell ya. So, Tamakis' house, let's go. And we get this nice little watery interlude. I'm sorry about the yellow bar that it's not full. Alright, welcome to the last area in the video game. We are almost done with this thing. It's been a, a lovely hour and a half so far, basically. And now we're in here. It's dark. Let's equip that fire jewel. Let's save the video game. And not take damage from skeletons. All you have to do when a skeleton approaches you is swing wildly and let go of the sword button. Or not let go of the sword button, you want to hold that sword button down. But just don't move. Let go of the D-pad. Swing the sword. This might hit me here. Nope, we're good. Yep, 
And there are a few alternate paths you can take through here that don't get you anywhere. You know, we, we tend to speed run this video game, so we know where to go. So we're not going to put on anything yet. We are going to save the video game. And we're going to go fight a little boss here. I dub it the fake boss. So, right now, we are going to put on the Protect Ring, and now it can't hurt us anymore. But watch our ring power drain. Alright, so let's take this ring off. Let's put on the Brosia Serum, just... Smack it three times. Nope, well, not three times. We're gonna use it twice. And let's get going. And there's gonna be cutscenes here. Steering. And we have cutscenes. Adolf, wait. I'm the one who caused this. You shouldn't die because of my foolishness. Welcome, Adolf. I admire your courage. Demanicus, where is Elena? Take a look right here. Please, stay away! Elena! Let Elena go! She has nothing to do with this! Take me instead! What I need are those statues that Adolf has. I don't need you. Brother and sister dying together. What a nice image. Alright, Adolf. See what happens to those who oppose me. Demonicus, prepare to die! I will avenge all those who died by your hand! Chester, don't! Why do you always turn to fighting? Why must there always be killing? Both you and Demonicus are living beings, with emotions and feelings. Why? Elena, I know only too well. But this is the real world. If we don't kill him, he will kill us! If Demonicus is not killed, the human race may be destroyed! I hope you are finished with your goodbyes. Because now it is time to die. Crafty boy, aren't you? Step up onto the platform with the statues. Alright, we'll see how this goes. <laughs> so this is the final boss. We're gonna put on our ring, hopefully not die. This is not time when this boss dies, just a heads up. As my first act, I will give you a taste of my true power.
Ooh. Okay. <laughs> I don't think that might be world record pace. So I know the timer started about 30 seconds late due to stream delay and whatnot. So I'm pretty sure this might be world record by a minute, but we, um, I'll let our, uh, our end game play out and I will tell you when time is. My brother went to the center of the land of Demonicus. He is going to destroy all of it. No, Adolf, don't go. My brother says it's his fault. So he should be the one to deal with Demonicus. Adolf, please, of course I care. We lived together for more than 17 years. I believe in my brother. I have faith. He will return. There is one thing I have to tell you. There is a legend in these parts that a long time ago, a brave young man locked Demonicus away. The village that my brother and I were born in was founded by the descendants of this brave man. King McGuire feared that his plans to bring back Demonicus would be in danger as long as these descendants lived. That is why he destroyed our village. My brother is the only one left who knows the secret that will crush the world of Demonicus. If Demonicus is to be put away for good, my brother must go. It's all right, Adol, as long as you understand. Yeah, we even paused it a little bit. Oh, um, pretty sure this will be, um, yeah, actual hardware, world record, whatnot. There is a run out there that I learned a lot from that's done on the weird uh, PC Engine only PSP downloadable version. Um, that has like a 119, but I don't know how different it actually is. <laughs> but I did learn a lot of those strats from it. But we still have a few more minutes left before this time. Probably about two full minutes. And then there's an ending that'll play. Should we really leave so soon? Okay, so time will be we're gonna walk out of town Adol, when both Dogi and Adol walk off screen and it fades to black. Why don't you go on ahead? So it'll still be a little bit, but it's coming soon. I wish you could stay. Where is Dogi? Aren't you leaving together? Elena, are you sure? You'll never meet another fellow like Adel. Are you just going to let him go? If I don't leave now, I Adel will... always just takes off. He never waits around towns. Well, Elena. But no one's ever mad at him for it. Elena's gonna start to chase him off after town. What is there for you out there? You should stay here with us. Time is very soon. Dogi's gonna show up, and when they both leave screen, fade to black. <clears throat> Adel, wait for me. Haven't you forgotten something? And that's time on my end. Sure you shouldn't say goodbye. I'm sure it'll be time in a moment there too. But that was that was East Three. <laughs> Thank you so much for all of the GG's, y'all. That was amazing. I'm so happy I got to show this off for y'all. 
Um, there is a very overwrought explanation of adventure coming up very shortly in right before the credits, which I'd love to still be able to show. Um, but we're gonna. It's my last split of this game is called "It's Anime Time," and it is absolutely anime time. Tell you what, since we're we got a PB and a world record, I'll read the the overwrought explanation, and then I'll do my outro. It all looks over like no one's ever spoken to him before. She's calling you. What are you going to do? Never forget what you've done. Your bravery, your kindness, your inspiration. Someday, Adolf. <laughs> someday. I know Just I'll waves. Be able to see you again. Hey, thank you so much, everybody, for watching this. Um, if we still have a moment, there is an overwrought explanation of an adventure that goes on for too long. And I'll, um, to celebrate this, I will happily read it to you. If that's okay with everybody out here. Give it a moment to scroll on screen. To a mortal's eye, it would seem that Adol's journey has come to an end. But to the eye of an adventurer, one can see that Adolf's travels have just begun. The world is, is too wide and its people too diverse to ever declare a complete victory. I'm posing as I'm doing this, but y'all can't see that, I'm sorry. In fact, it is the precise desire to seek out new adventure and triumph which keeps our hearts young and our spirits alive. We only age when we become satisfied and complacent with the life of mortals. True inspiration comes from the ambition to live life to its fullest. So Adol continues on his march to experience and explore the ways of the world, to face all of the challenges of good over evil, and to rid the common people of tyranny and exploitation. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's where it ends. No. No, it does not. <laughs> As we learn each of life's lessons, we are more prepared for the next. Maybe that's it? Maybe that's where the narration ends? Maybe? That must be it, there's no more text, right? No, there's more! <laughs> Go now, Adol! Find your life's destiny in the spirit of free- spirit and freedom of a true adventurer. And that's where it actually ends, and then we go into the credits. <laughs> <laughs> okay hey everyone that went super well thank you so much i'm gonna i'm pretty confident that's a world record um that's fantastic i do want to shout out all of the people at um uh questing for glory for putting on this lovely marathon thank you so much for letting me open it thank you so much rapid Limit break for hosting this thing and um i i, I want to shout out distraction crab and our lovely restreamer norestra which i probably just butchered their name uh and all of y'all in chat, if you liked what you saw, I am Glitchwitch. You can find me on the internet at, you know, Glitchwitch. 
And um, maybe check it out. I play a lot of East games. I play a lot of Turbo Graphics. I play a lot of good games. I play a lot of bad games. This is my streaming is my job, and I try to be as entertaining as I can. So maybe come look at my channel if you'd like what I did. But also keep watching Questing for Glory. We have lovely more stuff coming up. This is not the last you've heard of my voice. You'll hear it at some point in the future, probably twice. And uh, I'm going to throw it away to our lovely host to take us out and uh, thank you again. All right, sounds good. That was an absolutely amazing, fun run to watch, Glitch Wish. Thank you very much. Uh, as an East fan myself, it, it is very much enjoyable to watch some of the games that I haven't had a chance to play myself. Now, as we're getting set up to move on to our next run, we have a couple more donations to read out here real quick. We have one from Rhea Skies that says, Hi, Cat. Good luck out there. It's dangerous to adventure alone, so take this travel money. Thank you very much, Rhea. Very much appreciated. I'm sure Cat appreciates that, too. We have a donation from A. Smith. It says, So glad to have an another opportunity to support NAMI. Good luck to all the runners this week, and thanks to all the volunteers and staff. Thank you very much, A. Smith. Very much appreciated. We are glad to have you once again. And we just got... Alright, um, continuing on to another donation, we have one quick one by Lat, Lat Mackie. That's actually quite, quite the tongue twister. It says, just in time for the GG. It says, thanks for showcasing the TurboGrafx-16. That is, that is a very interesting console I've never heard of before, and I feel very privileged to have Glitch Witch show it to us tonight. Thank you very much again, Glitch Witch, and thank you very much, Lat Mackie. Ooh, and just coming in at the very end, a big donation from Joshi D. No message, but Joshi D, thank you very much for your large donation. Really appreciate it. Nami thanks you, and we all thank you here. 